Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saveth them out of their distresses. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Verse 22, we'll read together. And let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. Praise be the name of Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good. And he permits us to be here this morning. Could I, we could otherwise mind it, but because God mercy towards us, we are here this morning to worship and to lift up his name. If I pray this morning, we will turn our song book to 73. All the way my Savior lead me. Let us remember those who are sick, our neighbors, our friends, our community and our country. Let us put them before God this morning. At the, at the singing of the last verse, I ask everybody, um, please to stand, those who can stand, and to lead us to the throne of grace will be Minister Basil Phillips.
thank you this morning Lord Jesus for a privilege that we can come into your house another time we thank you Lord for waking us up this morning in our right mind hallelujah God you didn't forget to blow bread in our nostril we thank you hallelujah we thank you Lord for life oh God for health for strength we thank you this morning that our hands and our feet, Lord Jesus, are moving. Oh, God Almighty, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the way you made for us. God Almighty, through the past years, oh, God, until we reach this Sunday, the second Sunday, Lord Jesus of 2011. We thank you. Shama. Hey, oh God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, because you know all that is good for us. You lead us in pastures green. Oh God Almighty, through many dangers, toil, and snares, we have already come. Hallelujah. God, you alone knows about tomorrow. We know nothing about tomorrow, but we place our hand into your hands. Lord Jesus, you promised to lead us to the end. God, we have started, but the end, the end is not yet come. So we continue to trust in you. We continue to believe in you. We continue to put our thoughts into your thoughts. As you lead us on, Lord. Continue to order our steps each day. Our going out, our coming in. Lord Jesus, we ask of the oh God to go before us. These trying times and these troublesome times. With you, Lord God, in the vessel, we can smile and all star. Oh God Almighty, we thank you this morning. We worship you, Lord, because you are God. We look to you because there is no other one in whom we can look to. Your only source. We thank you this morning. We come, Lord, with our different needs. Hallelujah. 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 God, you know us individually. We stand before you this morning. Lord Jesus, save and unsave. God, you know us individually. The very here and ahead are numbered by you, Lord. There's nothing we can hide from you. This morning, place ourselves in before you, Lord. Wash us, daily. Purge us. Make us clean. Lord, we want to be here at your coming. We want to see you as a savior, not as a phony judge. That's why we come this morning for fresh washing. Purge us, sweetie, son, if that must be. No matter how we only sin, die out in us. As we are for your sacrifice to you, Lord. God, as we go through this month of consecration and devotion, we pray that you clean us up. We pray that you wash us, darling. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you accept us into your throne. God Almighty, let each day, Lord, we die daily. Let each day we find ourselves near to you. Let each day, Lord Jesus, oh God, as we move, we move into your spirit. 
We look to you this morning. Bless this day's service, Lord. Take full charge, full control. You have already been here, Lord. You have already in our midst. But we ask of thee that you'll take over fully. Let set be slain, Lord, and we see only thee. Though it might cause grief and pain. God Almighty, we're fighting back our life in you again. Bless each soul, Lord. Walk through these doors today. Let there be a word for them, Lord. Let there be a word, Lord Jesus, for each individual. God Almighty, as we wait upon you today, as the table spread, Lord God, our appetite will be open. Lord Jesus, we feast upon your word. Bless the messenger, the one that should bring for the word today. Inspired, answering. Let the words come from the power and clarity. Lord Jesus, and his soul rejoice today. Say it was good to be here. Bless our pastor, Bishop Hewitt. Lord Jesus, bless Bishop Thompson. Oh God, and all the rest of elders, Lord. God Almighty minister, each one that comes to this door today. Bless us today and cause our time to shine upon us. Whatever we fail of us, that we fail not to grant it today. We ask it all in your will and through your name. In Jesus' name. I sing because I am happy. Yes, I sing because.
have a wonderful God who knows just what we need and will give us all that we need as long as it's in his will. Amen? Amen. We just want to honor God today. We thank him for all his wonderful benefits towards us. His mercies are new every morning. Hallelujah. And so we just want to praise him today. We acknowledge the presence of our pastor, Bishop John Hewitt. We bless you, sir. Sister Hewitt isn't feeling well, so we continue to pray that she will be better in Jesus' name. We also want to acknowledge our associate pastor, Evangelist Sharon Williams. Sharon McDonald. Am I a prophetess here or what? <laughs> we bless God. We also want to acknowledge the presence of... They are so happy. Sister Sharon, bless you, bless you, bless you. We want to acknowledge the presence of all our officers in the name of Jesus. Amen. And to all the wonderful members here at 20 South Camp Road, God bless you this morning. We have a special guest today in the person of Evangelist Todd from Global Apostolic Ministry in Canada. Oh, he's actually Pastor Todd. Welcome, sir. And with him, we have Mr. and Mrs. George Wright. God bless you. We're happy to have you worship with us today. We also have Novlet Nation, who is the daughter of Sister O. Pusey. And Novlet is visiting from the USA. Novlet? Oh? Oh, she's somewhere. Visiting from the U.S. Okay. God bless you. God bless you. We also have visiting Alicia Clark. And she was invited by Sister Carr. Alicia? Well, wherever you're sitting, we want to say welcome to you. God bless you. We also have some other visitors. I didn't get the names, but I'm going to ask you to stand so we can acknowledge you at this time. All our visitors, wonderful, wonderful. We give you a special welcome from Bethel, and we love to see you in the temple, so we invite you to come again, and we ask that you invite someone with you when you're coming next time. God bless you. If you have not yet received a blue visitor's package, I'm going to ask you to remain standing until one of our greeters hand one to you. We ask that you fill in the information on that card that is in there. Give us the information, tear that portion off, and place it in the offering plate. And the section with the church, picture of the church, we ask that you keep that as a memoir. Your memory of your visit here. But God bless you. There's Sister Joan. God bless you. And we are happy to have you. Before I take my seat, there is a, there is a sister who works very hard in the visitors in the visitors ministry and she's having a birthday today sister Philistina Henry <laughs> happy birthday to you oh old I <laughs> God bless you Sister Pews is unable to be in church as her grandmother has been admitted in the Kinson Public Hospital Ward 1B. This says grandmother. It's her mother. Her mother then is admitted in the KPH. Remember Sister Pusey in your prayers. As the choir sing the welcome song, I'm going to ask us all to just greet someone today. 
And let us enjoy the Lord. He's good to us. Amen. God bless you. you all. Welcome to Bethel, the house of God. And we're really glad you came. May your hearts be blessed today in the name of the Lord Jesus. We have a brother Quenita Grant who was baptized on Thursday night. He's sitting upstairs. Brother Grant. Welcome, sir. God bless you. God bless you. Praise God. Amen. Well, we just want to endorse the welcome that's been given. And may your hearts be really blessed today. Uh, Bishop Thompson and Mother Thompson, they're visiting elsewhere this morning. We pray for them. Thanks for your prayers for Sister Hewitt, who has really not been doing uh, well. Uh, mending by the day. So God bless you. Continue to pray for her. Well, we, we just rise to receive the morning's tithes and offering and gifts, whatever other gifts we might have. Uh, just have a seat for a while. You know, last week when we spoke from the book of Chronicles, Jehoshaphat spoke in the 20th verse of the of Second Chronicles 20. He said, "Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God; so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets; so shall ye prosper." So he invited the congregation to believe, first of all, in the Lord their God. If they wanted to be established, to be firmly entrenched, to be secured, to be fixed, to be settled. He says, believe in your God. And if you want to prosper, if you want to succeed, to flourish, to get ahead, to profit, to progress. He says, believe his prophets. Believe in what the prophets say to you. Believe in what your pastors say to you. Believe in your God. And all of this will happen to you. Our Million for the Kingdom initiative, as of last week, 
you had graciously given $494,000 towards the initiative. Uh, this week, um, myself and Sister Hewitt would like to contribute $100,000 to this initiative, which lifts it up to $594,000. So we're near $600,000. By the way, we have, that check is right here. Um, so we have $400,000 to go. Let's try and get this thing settled by the end of this month. Uh, if you would like to draw $400,000, a check for $400,000, my brother, <laughs> then um, you, you could do so, all right? Those of you who have not yet done so, please. We only have $400,000 to go to complete the million for the kingdom. And I know we can do it. Can we do it? Yes. Amen. Praise God. Um, also, while we're at it, uh, and I'm just saying this just to give God the praise and to see whether or not you also will be encouraged to give. And uh, as the pastor, I want to be the first example of giving. So in addition to giving this $100,000 between myself and Sister Hewitt, we want to, and don't clap, just give God the glory. We want to give a million dollars towards the seating arrangements in this church. And a half of that check is here as well today. Amen. Praise God. Just give God the glory. Amen. We want to give a million dollars to all. Oh, we are so excited about this. Amen. Praise God. Uh, and we want to be the first example in giving and just to encourage you to give as well. Amen. So, please, let us have the rest of the $400,000 towards a million for the kingdom. And our new chairs will be in for convocation. And we, we're just excited. Amen. So God bless you. We're going to repeat the Bethel Givers Creed. First Chronicles 16, 28 to 34. Everybody be standing. And we're going to say this with much enthusiasm and gusto. Give unto the Lord, ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord the glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. The world also shall be stable, that it be not moved. Let the heavens be glad, and let the earth rejoice. And let men say among the nations, the Lord reigneth. Let the sea roar, and the fullness thereof. Let the fields rejoice. And all that is therein. Then shall the trees of the woods sing out to the presence of the Lord, because he cometh to judge the earth. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Can we try that one more time? Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let's give the Lord a praise this morning. In Jesus' name, remain standing for the blessing. Minister Tyrrell Morgan will ask the blessing of the tithes, the gifts, and the offerings. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for your great name, the name Jesus, that saving name, that delivering name. We thank you have brought us out of sin. Lord God, we ask for the spirit of generosity, the release of the spirit of faith upon our lives. As we reach into our resources to give, as you reach into yourself to give of your own self, manifesting yourself in flesh, we ask you that there will be no inhibition, Lord, here, that your people will give freely in the spirit of love. In the name of Jesus, we declare, Lord God, the breaking of every curse over our lives. Lord God, we declare a supernatural anointing to come upon those that will give today according to the word of the prophet and the pastor over this assembly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One moment, we got to carried away just to mention as well that we have Pastor Todd visiting with us who will be speaking uh, there. Our uh, speakers uh, baskets uh, so marked, they are blue. So let's give a very liberal offering as well to our speaker today in Jesus' precious name. Amen.
Thank Him for our saving grace and that is true. So I bless the Lord to the best I can. See my Jesus in the glory land. Well, I wanna see my, see my blessed Lord. Take him by the hand. I wanna be with, be Jesus. with Christ, my Lord. Over in the glory land. Glory land. I wanna see, see him face to face. Of his love so true. I wanna thank him God for saving grace. How I made it through. I'm gonna serve him every morning. Serve my blessed Lord. And do the best I can. Do the best I can. Yes. See my Jesus in the glory land. Yes, I wanna see my Jesus. See my blessed Lord. I wanna take him by the take hand. Take him by the hand. Yes, I wanna see my Jesus. Be with Christ, my Lord. Over in the glory land. In the glory land. I wanna see him face to face. Of this love so true, I want to thank him for what saving grace, how I made it through. I'm going to serve him every serve moment, my blessed Lord, and do the best I can, do the best I can, see my Jesus in the glory land. Yes, I want to be with Christ, my Lord, I want to take him by the take hand, him by the hand. yes, I want to be with Jesus, be with Christ, my Lord, over in the glory land. Of his love so true, I wanna thank God for saving grace. How I made it through, I'm gonna serve him every moment and do the best I can. Do the best I can. Yes. See my Jesus in the glory land. Yes, I wanna see my Jesus. Be with Christ, my Lord. I wanna take him by the hand.
one day we shall be holding face to face. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is good and his mercy endure it forever. Yes, Lord. We will not hear from our women senior choir. Praise God.
forward march we're going forward thank you senior women's fellowship choir for your encouraging song encouraging us to go forward it's forward still to Jehovah's will do the billows dash and spray with a conquering tread we'll push ahead and he will roll the sea away he'll fight our battles because he's a god of battles he's never lost one always victorious uh, the funeral service for sister norma otty that will be held this saturday coming the 15th of january at 10 o'clock in the morning right here so let's come and encourage the 22nd the following week okay thank you for reminding me uh, the 22nd, so that's next Saturday, not this one. Next Saturday, the 22nd. So let's encourage the family. Let's be in prayer for them as well. Amen. At the end of the service, please don't rush off. We'll have other announcements, including what we will be doing this week in our consecration, prayer and fasting. Uh, this week, we'll be doing any, th any three links. Um, the head of the prayer ministry will come at the end of the service uh, to let us know what the teaching exercise will be this week and any other announcements with regards to th this second week of consecration, prayer, and fasting. We're happy to have Pastor Alan Todd from Global Apostolic Ministers in Scarborough, Canada, with us. Uh, Coming out of Bethlehem in Toronto, works very closely with his pastor, Bishop D.W. Thompson. Uh, we are so happy to have him. Came uh, this week, this past week, we did a, a wedding right here on Friday. By the way, is Richard here? Richard and Julie? There's... Oh, yes, right on there. Richard Allen. Give, 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 give a couple of, a big hand. Is, is Julie here? Rishi. Oh, all right. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. God bless you. Um, Brother Clifford and wife is also here this morning. They got married as well. So let's give them, let's thank God for them. Uh, Clifford has come back to the Lord. Isn't that beautiful? Let's pray for them in Jesus' name. That's wonderful. Uh, Pastor Todd's sister and husband, uh, they are also here today. We are happy to have them. Let's say praise God for them. So right at this time, let's all stand and receive the ministry of Pastor Alan Todd. In Jesus' name, praise God. Praise the Lord, everyone. If the choir would help me. Speak, my Lord. Speak, my Lord. Speak, and I'll be quick to answer thee. Speak, my Lord. Speak, my Lord. Lord, send me, oh, speak, my Lord, speak, my Lord, speak, and I'll be quick to answer thee, speak, my Lord. came here this morning to receive a word from the Lord. Just raise your hand. 
Hallelujah. Raise both hands and let's just worship God while you sing that again for me. Right across this building, let's just worship Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice. Speak, speak, Lord. And I'll be quick to answer thee. The formalities are out of the way. I want to hear from you today. My Lord. Hallelujah. My Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, I've had a rough week. And I, I don't know what I'm going into this week, Lord, but I come here to worship you. Me. I come to worship you. Speak, Lord. Speak, Hallelujah. My Lord. Hallelujah. That's it. Let's reach out quiet. Speak, little way my yes, Lord. I need to hear your voice. Speak and I'll be quick I need to, to know your voice. Me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Speak, my Lord. Yes, speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak, my, my Lord. Lord. Speak, and I. Speak, and I, and I will answer, Lord. Send me. Yes, speak, my Lord. Speak, my Lord. Yes, from the balcony, raise your hands and let's worship speak. Jesus. Open your mouth and give God some praise right now. He wants you to praise Him. Lift up your voice and give Him honor and give Him glory. Somebody needs to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost this morning. Somebody's life needs to be changed. God wants to speak to somebody. He wants to speak into your finance, into your family. He wants to speak to your career. He wants to speak to your health. He wants to speak to your eternal destiny. He wants to speak to your life, to your marriage, to your children. Hallelujah. To your nation, to your community. Hallelujah. We need to hear. We need to hear God. Hallelujah. I'm tired of hearing preachers. I need to hear God. Hallelujah. I don't just want to hear the person beside me. I need to hear God. Hallelujah. He's still speaking. He still speaks. He's not a mute. He's not a deaf mute. He speaks. God speaks. Hallelujah. God talks. And he talked to you this morning. Hallelujah. Speak to my spirit. Speak to my health. Speak to my body. Speak to my church. Speak, Lord. We need to hear from you. It's been a long time. Hallelujah. It's been a long time. I need to hear you speak to the recesses of my soul. I need to hear the whisper of your voice in the trauma of my life. In the crisis of my circumstances, I need to hear your whisper. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord, I need to hear from you. I didn't come to church just to hear from people. I need to hear you. I need to know without a shadow of a doubt that you're talking. That you have something to say to us. Here at Bethel. Here across this island, across this world. Hallelujah. Lord, send me. Hold the hand of your neighbor. Let's pray together. Squeeze the hand of the person beside you. I am almost certain that the person whose hands you're holding has needs, has situations, dilemmas in their life, stuff they're trying to work out difficulties they don't know what to do hallelujah somebody may be at the brink of suicide you don't know whose hands you're holding we're going to pray this morning together in the name of Jesus because we know the blood of Jesus the power of the Holy Ghost hallelujah 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 can break every chain can set the captive free 
can give liberty to a troubled soul this morning right across this building apostolics children of god let's pray in jesus name father we thank you we give you glory pray everybody in jesus name Hallelujah. Touch my brother on my left, my sister on my right. Father, I'm holding the hand of somebody that may be ill in their body. Somebody that needs the Holy Ghost right now. Father, fill them, breathe on them, breath of God. Fill them with life anew. Hallelujah. Somebody, hallelujah, hallelujah, has a situation they're trying to work out. As I hold their hands right now, God, begin to answer hallelujah from heaven in the name of jesus we plead the blood right now hallelujah we rebuke every principality we rebuke every power in the name of jesus we rebuke forces of darkness hallelujah that have come to hinder the move of god this morning hallelujah over the lives of your children there is somebody here that needs to be saved hallelujah we plead the blood right now father in the name of jesus hallelujah open blinded eyes open deaf ears hallelujah give them a heart to receive what you're saying this morning father we bless you remember the man of god over this house and his family hallelujah those that stand to lead those that stand to function hallelujah in the office of leadership we thank you right now father let your spirit permeate in this building reach out into the community in this nation that somebody might know that there is a god hallelujah in the name of jesus christ father somebody is about to commit suicide stop him right now in the name of jesus somebody is about to take somebody's life stop them right now in the name of jesus hallelujah turn them around father hallelujah and release your people for ministry in the precious name of jesus we thank you right now lift your hands and let's give god praise come on let's give him praise open your mouth and give him praise saints of god let this building be filled with the praises of zion hallelujah let the redeemed of the lord say so whom the lord has redeemed from the hand of the enemy lift up your voice and give god a praise let's shout unto him because he is worthy i wish you wouldn't care who's beside you i wish you would not care who's around you and just let go and let god just let god be glorified hallelujah 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 somebody who's not afraid to open your mouth and just give god the praise somebody that's not afraid to say thank you i don't know where i'd be if it had not been for the lord on my side so i don't care what you think about me i come to praise the lord this morning i come to magnify jesus you don't know where i'm coming from i come to praise the name of jesus there's no other name there's no other god like him hallelujah 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 if you open your mouth he'll fill you with the holy ghost if you open his mouth if you open your mouth he'll release peace in your spirit if you open your mouth can i tell you your mouth is dangerous the devil doesn't want you to open your mouth but if you open your mouth and say hallelujah your circumstances will change there's something about a holy ghost filled saint that can praise him in the spirit hallelujah 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 the devil is afraid of your mouth life and death death and life is in the power of your tongue hallelujah no weapon is formed against you shall prosper hallelujah but when the enemy comes up against you you've got to open your mouth and release a praise out of your spirit because he's a good god hallelujah 
Some of you are acting so nice like you were born in church. You weren't born in church. Hallelujah. You better give God a praise. Hallelujah. 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 I sense a spirit of praise. And somehow you're holding it back. But I dare you just to let go and let God, if you will praise him, he'll speak to your circumstance. If you praise him, he'll speak to your marriage, to your children, to your mind, to your body, to your ministry, to your love, to your love, to your community, to your church. He will speak. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's something that happens when Holy Ghost filled people begin to praise God. The devil's on the run. The devil's on the run. Hallelujah. I don't, I don't, I don't know about you, but essentially I come to church for one reason, and that's to worship Jesus. I want to feel him, I want to hear him, I want to give him the best that I have. I want to raise my hands, I want to sweat, I want to cry, I want to worship Jesus. Hallelujah. We get more done in a few moments of authentic spirit driven worship. We can get more done in a few minutes of worship than two hours of programming and services. And I'm not against it. I just, there's just something special about worshiping Jesus. Some of the hell that some of you came out of this week. You need to worship. And some of the stuff you're going to go into this week, you need to worship. Some of the stuff you have to deal with at home, some of the stuff you have to deal with on your job, some of the stuff you have to deal with all around you with your children and your spouses and all this kind of stuff. Amen. You can't deal with that in your flesh. You need the spirit. You need to worship God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We don't come here to play patty cake. We don't come here to fool around. We're serious people when it comes. I, our lives are in jeopardy here. I don't come here to fool around. I come to praise God. Hallelujah. We have a short time. We have a short time. Let's get radical and let's get crazy about this thing. We got a short time here. We got a short time here. Put it back where it was. We got a short time here. Let's get crazy about this. Let's get radical about this. Let the tears flow. Let the tears flow. Let the tongues flow out of your spirit. Don't let anybody looking at you funny make you feel any way. You lift up your hands and give God praise. Because they don't know the hell you're going through. They don't know what you're going through. They don't know the trauma in your life. 
and you need the uplifting of the Spirit of God hallelujah I need the uplifting of the Spirit of God to do the stuff that he's assigned for me to do hallelujah there's a community to be reached a nation to be touched a world to be affected and we're not gonna affect anything with lukewarm worship we're not gonna change any lives with lukewarm sedity comfortable people no 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 it needs people who are radical serious about worship people who know how to get into the holies of holies not no outer court worship we need inner court worship I need to get into the presence of the living God hallelujah hallelujah we want to get to that place where the cloud of the glory of God just begins to hover over the building and no man can worship, no man can preach, nobody can play music, nobody can sing, nobody can do nothing. Just the presence of God. Fill the house of God. We don't need personalities in the pulpit. We need God. I want to move on, but I just feel a presence of worship here. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Some of you have to undig some wells because there's stuff going on in your life. And if you don't lift up your hands and praise it, the enemy has filled in some wells. The place where you used to worship, you can't get there anymore. But you need to undig that well. The Philistines have put some stuff on you. The, the enemies put some stuff on you. And you, you can't open your mouth and praise like you used to. Lift up your hands and give God praise. And undig those wells. We don't want professional Christians. We need real folk who are going through stuff and can undig some stuff in their life and say, Lord, I need a touch. Oh God, thank you Lord, thank you Lord, thank you Lord. If you praise him, he's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Woo. Thank you Lord.
Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. There's a wonderful presence of the Holy Ghost here today. Don't have any don't have any inhibitions. Just worship God. Lift your hands, praise him, open your mouth, shout. You just worship the Lord. There is nothing sweeter to his ears than to hear the praises of his people. If you would just stand with me for a few more moments, we'll turn to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 3. First Samuel chapter 3. I want to give honor to the bishop, the pastor of this house, the Bishop Hewitt, and his wife, although she's ill at this time. We give honor to the man of God over this house and to Bishop Emeritus, to Bishop Thompson. We acknowledge all the officers, the elders, the ministers, all the evangelists and missionaries, the deacons, those that serve and operate in the things of the Lord, to the associate pastor, to uh, this precious and lovely choir. Amen. Both choirs. Amen. We want to thank God for you today. To the household of faith, we greet you with a praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. And to our visiting friends that are here with us today, I don't consider myself a visitor. I, whenever I come to Jamaica, this is home. So, um, But to all the other visitors that are uh, with us today, we extend a greeting to you. We pray and trust that you, will, you feel the presence of the Lord here. Amen. And with a doubt, without a doubt, you can know that he is here. Amen. Among his people, he loves you and cares for you. Please let me ex extend a word of thank you for your offering this morning. Thank you for sowing into my life. We pray that as you sow natural things, we can be uh, a spiritual blessing to you. Uh, I bring greetings uh, from Sister Todd and the family and Global Apostolic family. Amen. Also from Bishop Thompson. It's just so wonderful to be here uh, in this beautiful sunny island. Amen. And uh, I was just so privileged. I am privileged to be here because we had so much snow this week. Uh, just yesterday, actually, where I live. And so it's just good to be here, if you know what I mean. Amen. First Samuel 3. And it's so good to see so many of my, my friends that I haven't seen for a little while since my last time here. It's so good to see you. Amen. I'm not going to go into names, but you know who you are. 1 Samuel 3, and if you can stand, please stand together, everyone, for the reading of word. Listen carefully to the reading of this word. I, I think it is a very important and timely uh, scripture and word for us at this particular season one because we are in the process of uh, our consecration month and and two because of the times and the seasons that we're living in and the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli and the word of the Lord was precious in those days there was no open vision and it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was and Samuel was laid down to sleep. And the Lord called Samuel and he answered here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I call not. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. 
And the Lord called yet again Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I. For thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not, my son, lay down again. Now Samuel did not, now this is verse 7, important. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lay down, and it shall be, if he call thee, thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place, and the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel, at which both the ears of every one that heareth shall tingle. And in that day I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will also make an end. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth. Because his sons made themselves vile, and he restrained them not. And therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice nor with offering forever. And Samuel laid down until the morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord. And Samuel feared to show Eli the vision. Then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he answered, here am I. And he said, what is the thing that the Lord has said unto thee? I pray thee, hide not from me. God do so to thee. And more also, if thy hide anything from me of all the things that he, has saith, he said unto thee. And Samuel told him every whit, and hid nothing from him. And he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seemeth him good. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan even to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh. And the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. Let everybody say amen. amen. Uh, I'm just going to read two verses again as our main text, verses 1 and verse 7. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. Verse 7. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now I, I will be... I will be um, very frank with you this morning and uh, I don't know why the Lord always does this to me but we, we, we need in, in a lot of ways to, to challenge the church and to challenge the people of God to live to worship to honor and to adore God in all of their ways and to Lift him up. We're living in a serious time and if there's ever a time that the church needs to be the church, it's now. Amen. We're at the end. It's close to the coming of the Lord. Amen. Signs are all around us. And so there are many people to be rescued. There are many people to be saved. And the church must be who she is called to be uncompromisingly. A man and must be fully assured of 
God's dealing with the church. I, I want to speak with you, and I, I, you know, don't get upset with me, but I, I, I will challenge you. And even if you get upset with me, I'm still going to challenge you anyway. So, we want to use for the subject today, speak, Lord. Turn to your neighbor and say, I need the Lord to speak to me. Yeah, look at them in the face. Tell them, I need the Lord to speak to me. There might be some people who doesn't, don't believe that the Lord speaks, but the Lord still speaks. The Lord does speak. I, 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 I want to be mindful about this, that, you know, living for God and coming to church, we should never get into a situation or be in a position where we think that what we do on Sunday morning is the totality of our Christian experience. It's important to know that God can speak to you on Wednesday evening just as much as he can speak to you on Sunday morning. Uh, that God is not restrict, restricted to times and places. Amen. Uh, the lovely thing about being in the New Testament church is that we no longer need to go to a priest to go to God on our behalf. But there's something beautiful in the New Testament called the priesthood of all believers. And so since the dawning of the Holy Ghost and the coming of the Holy Ghost, each of us in here, with, filled with the Holy Ghost, has access to God. And so the scriptures encourage us to come boldly before the presence of God. And so it doesn't matter who you are, where you are, how old you are, what situation you are, amen, your locale, your distance, your education has no bearing on God's ability to speak to you. Amen. God can speak to you in any situation. Amen. And this is an important thing. In the book of Numbers, chapter 11, and part of this may feel a little bit like Bible class, so I'm just going to take my time and I hope you won't be uh, too hindered by that. In the book of Numbers, there was a situation where uh, Moses was uh, being, becoming burdened with the, the capacity and the weight of leading the people of God. And so the Lord said that what he was going to do was going to take the spirit from Moses and place it upon 70 of the elders. Therefore, those men would be able to share in the burden with Moses. And so while the elders came, the Lord lifted the spirit off of Moses and placed it upon the 70 elders. But there were two gentlemen that were not in the company, although they were listed in the 70, but they were not at the door of the tabernacle. Their names were Eldad and Medad. And so although they were not physically in the place of the tabernacle, uh, when the Spirit of the Lord came down upon them, Eldad and Medad began to prophesy. And so there was a gentleman, a little guy that was there, and he ran to Moses and told Moses, he said, Moses, listen, there's two gentlemen in, the, in their tents that are, are prophesying before the Lord. And when Joshua took wind of this, Joshua turned to Moses and said, you need to go and stop them. Amen. You need to go and stop them from prophesying. And, and Moses said to jo Joshua, he said, Envieth thou for my sake or for thy sake? And Moses gave us a hint of the intent of God. Moses in this, in this declaration gives us just a, an insight to what God's mind is. He said, I would to God that all God's people would prophesy. And that the spirit of the Lord would lift upon and rest upon everybody. And that was just a New Testament prophetic word that all God's people would get to a place where the Spirit of God would move through them and they can speak to God and speak on the behalf of God. Somebody say amen. amen. It was important that in the Garden of Eden, the Bible says that the voice of God walked in the cool of the day. Amen. I was struck when I heard that it was God's voice that communed with Adam in the garden. So I, it was important for Adam to have sweet fellowship and to hear from God. When you're walking down South Camp Road, it's possible for the voice of God to walk with you. Amen. That God can speak and no matter what circumstance you're in, God is there to hear you. It has always been God's intention to commune with his people. So the Holy Ghost is the fulfillment, the giving of the Holy Spirit is the fulfillment of God's desire to speak to us and to speak with us. So it is important in this time to have the Holy Ghost. Somebody say amen. 
Turn to your neighbor and say, you need the Holy Ghost. This is important because the Holy Ghost is God himself dwelling in you, speaking in you. And so in Ezekiel 36, he says, there's coming a time where you're not just going to rely on the book anymore, but I'm going to put my spirit in you. Amen. I'm going to put my word in you. Amen. And so just in case in the Old Testament, if they went out and they, they didn't remember the word of God or they didn't know what the word of God said or they forgot one of the laws or something like that, they were in jeopardy of breaking the law. But God said, listen, there's going to come a time where I'm going to put my spirit in you. Amen. And there will be no need to forget because the spirit of God is going to speak to you right in that situation. Somebody say amen. Amen. And so it is important to understand that God still speaks. And since he speaks, each of us need to be at that place where we can hear his voice and never be confused about his speaking to us or never be in a situation where we don't understand what he's doing, how he is doing, what he does, or, or when he chooses to speak to us. This is important. And so we have this particular text before us in 1 Samuel chapter 3. Um, an interesting story, a very interesting uh, outlay of the calling of Samuel. Samuel is a young man who is a gift from God to a mother who has had difficulties. She had difficulties bringing forth children. Uh, and, and she prayed in the temple for a long time. And, and so Samuel becomes the gift of God. He opens her womb and gives her a child. But while she's praying, she prays and says, God, if you give me a son, I'll offer him back to you. And so Hannah, as she prays and the Lord answers her prayer, she goes back and she has this son. His name is Samuel. And after the point of weaning the boy, two or three years or so, she brings him back to the temple and hands him over to Eli. And so Eli now has the responsibility as the high priest of raising this young boy in the things of God. I want to share a few principles with you, uh, three principles particularly. And if you, those of you that take notes, write this down because I think it's important. Uh, and I don't want any of us to be fooled about what we're doing here in church. Um, the Bible says, listen, the Bible says that Samuel ministered unto the Lord. Samuel was serving in the things of God. Here's principle number one I want to share with you. It says, it is this. Working for God is not automatic that one knows God. Just because you work for God doesn't mean you know God. Somebody say amen, please. I'm, I said I'm going to challenge you. Just because you usher doesn't mean you know God. Just because you work in the community doesn't know, mean you know God. Just because you uh, serve and you're uh, 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 an altar worker. Well, as an altar worker, you should know God. But just because you're an altar worker doesn't necessarily mean you know God. Samuel was in this tabernacle doing the work of ministry. And sometimes if we're not careful, there are people that are working for God who don't know God. And anytime people are working on the behalf of God and they don't know God, they are putting the church in jeopardy. They are putting the church in a situation where many lives can be lost. Somebody say amen. amen. Samuel was working in the employ of Eli. He was faithfully executing his priestly duties when God called him. But when God called him, he was working, but he had never heard God before. Coming to church for years and never know God. Never hear the voice of God. Going through the routines of coming to church every Sunday morning. Getting all dressed up and coming to church. Even raising hands. God forbid that any of us would be on the choir and not know the voice of God. God forbid that any of us would be playing music or sound or doing anything in a technical area. And we don't know the voice of God. He was faithful doing what he was called to do. He was serving the man of God. And in all of this service, he didn't know the Lord. Spiritually. And I want to propose to some of you today that there is a difference between religion and being spiritual. 
There is a difference between going through rituals of religiosity and having a true spiritual encounter with God. The Bible said, listen, spiritually Samuel was not in the place where he could even discern the voice of God. Why is that? Because in John chapter 4, it says the very nature of God. God is a... And anybody that worshiped him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So somebody, you have to be in tune with your spirit if you're going to offer any kind of acceptable worship to God. And just because you come to a physical building and sit in the bench doesn't necessarily mean that your spirit is in tune with God. To truly worship God, you must be in the spirit. The only way to communicate with God is in the spirit. Paul said in Romans 8, he said, without the spirit of Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, he was not talking to unregenerated people. He was talking to the church in Rome. And he said to the brethren in Rome, if you have not the spirit of Christ, you're none of his. And so a part of the being claimed as an inherited child of God means one must have the spirit of God dwelling in them. Although he was working in the tabernacle, when God called him, he couldn't recognize and he didn't recognize the voice of God. You can't recognize the voice of God unless you are spiritually in tune with God. You've got to be born of the Spirit. You've got to be born of the Spirit. Turn to your neighbor and say, you've got to be born of the Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, Signing the church register doesn't mean you're born of the Spirit. Matter of fact, just because you get baptized in water doesn't mean you're born in the Spirit. It's a part of the process. It's a part of the process. You must be born of the water and the Spirit. So the water by itself is not good enough. You need the Spirit to bring regeneration. You need the Spirit to get inside in that deep part of the recesses of your soul hallelujah where only the, the, the consciousness of God is and purge and wash you in the deepest part of your soul hallelujah water can't reach there only the spirit can get to that place where we are the vilest in our thoughts, where they are vilest in our intentions, in our motives. Only the spirit can get into those places and clean us up. And so Jesus says, yes, we need to be, we need the washing of regeneration. But we need the spirit to get on the inside. Hallelujah. To change us, to turn us around. Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him in verse 7. How in the world do you get into a situation? How in the world do you get into a situation where you are functioning, you are working, you are serving, you are handling the things of God, but you don't know God? How do we get to that place in church where we are doing things for God but we don't know the living God? But there comes a time where God wants to speak. There comes a time where God wants to move you from religion into the realm of the spirit God wants to move you out of rituals and move you into a place of realism to get you to a place where it's real where it's meaningful where it touches you in the deepest parts of your life somebody say praise the Lord the Bible said that the Lord began to call him thank God for the call and God called him listen to this when you don't know God when you don't know the voice of God. The Lord called Samuel and the first thing he did was he ran to the pastor. 
ran to Eli. Eli, I, I heard you call me. Did you call me? Eli said, I never called you. Because when you don't know God, you will always confuse the voice of God. Ladies and gentlemen, there are many voices calling. Young people, there are voices calling. The minute you step out of this church, there are voices calling you from every corner, every crevice of this community and the society. And you need to know the voice of God different from any other voice. The Bible says many spirits have gone out into the world, but you need to know the difference between spirits. You need to know the difference between the spirit of God versus other spirits. And every spirit comes with a voice. God called him, Samuel. And Samuel ran to Eli. Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back to sleep, my young man. I didn't call you. And then while he lays down, God calls him again, Samuel. And Samuel jumps up and runs to Eli a second time. And then uh, Eli says, I didn't call you, young man. Get and go and lay down. And, and as he's laying down that night, God calls him again. Samuel jumps up like at other times and runs straight to Eli. And at this point, Eli recognizes that something is happening to this young man. Here's principle number two. Everybody needs someone who will direct them to the true presence of God. Everybody needs somebody. Who at a particular time in your life, at different phases of your life, can direct you in the things of God. Now you ought to be able to hear God yourself. It's important to hear God talk to you yourself. But you're, everybody needs somebody who can direct them in the way that they need to go. Somebody say praise the Lord. You're still with me? Just as... All of our faces are different, our needs are different, and we're in different situations in our lives. In your spiritual journey, everybody needs a mentor. Everybody needs somebody that has spiritual knowledge, that has understanding in the things of the Spirit, that has wisdom. I'm not talking about fly-by-night folk. I'm not talking about people who just want men's admiration. I'm not talking about people who want to lord over other people. I don't want... I'm not talking about people who, who have dreams and visions and they want to give those to you because they want to have a sense of superiority over you. I'm not talking about those kind of people. I'm talking about people who have a genuine love and a desire for where God is leading you. You don't need people around you for God to speak to you. But you do need people to direct you. That's how God has established the church. There are people that have wisdom, that have understanding, that have knowledge, that can guide you and direct you in the things that you need to go to do. Moses had Jethro. And he's a pretty awesome leader, Moses. He's a big man. I don't mean physically, he's a big man. Huge responsibilities. A lot of people to lead. A lot of hard decisions to make. But even Moses needs a Jethro at a particular time in his ministry that can shift him in his responsibilities and give him some direction on what God is saying at a particular time. Even the apostle Paul needs a Barnabas. And Paul is a pretty big man. He's the apostle to the Gentiles. He's a missionary. He, he's an evangelist. He's a pastor. He's a great leader. But even great leaders need other people to lead them. And say, brother Saul, the Lord told me to tell you. None of us get too big to hear from other people what God has to say for us. No title in church gets you to a place where you can't hear what other people have to say. And what God's voice is saying to you. Somebody say amen please. 
Apollos was a mighty preacher. He was convincing everybody, going everywhere, preaching and convincing everybody. But then it came Priscilla and Aquila. And the Bible said that they showed him the way more perfectly. And Apollos didn't say, I know everything. I've been to Bible college. I've been to seminary. No, he sat down. And he listened and discerned and he heard their word. And the Bible said he was mighty in scriptures. You need somebody. You need somebody to, to help you. I, I don't know. I don't know if it's maybe America or something, but this individual spirit where folks think just because you got the Holy Ghost, you don't need to hear from anybody. The devil is a liar. You still need teachers. You still need fathers. You still need mothers. You still need folk. Amen. Even in the aged people, you still need them to guide you and direct you. I don't care if you have a university degree. There's some things a degree just didn't give you. Have it. But seek wisdom. Nebuchadnezzar, our great king, needed a Daniel to show him what God was doing in his life. Timothy needed Paul. Barak needed a Deborah. Everybody needs somebody. And there, there, there's, an in, there's, an in, there's an independent spirit running all through the church. Where people don't think that they need anybody. People don't want to depend on anybody. People don't want to rely on anybody. That's a foreign spirit to the church. We need each other. I, I need God to speak to that little sister at the back of the church who may not have any title or, or nothing like that. But, but, but every now and then God might speak to her. And she might come and say, Pastor, God told me to tell you. Amen. Be able to discern and trust and love people. This is important because Samuel needed Eli to perceive what was going on. Or this young man would have been running back and forth all night not knowing what he was hearing. He needed somebody that could speak to him. I don't care how grown you think you are or how big you become. You need somebody to direct you at different stages in your life to direct you to what God is doing in your life. Samuel needed Eli and perceived what the Lord was, ta was talking to him. Without Eli, Samuel may have not discerned the right things. And let me say this, and I move to the next principle. I believe that one of the greatest and one of the worst things that this generation can do is to ignore the previous generation's wisdom in the things of God. The generation of young people that don't want to hear what the old folks have to say anymore. Because you think you can get all your answers from the internet or you can get all the answers from YouTube or whatever the case might be. And somehow we've cut off hearing the voice of the ancient of days. Of those senior ones who, who may not have credentials on the wall. But they have something in their spirit to deposit to you. That's why Paul said in the Bible, he said that the aged men teach the young men and the aged women teach the young women how to be. We should never get to a place in our churches where the old women and the old men stop teaching the young ones how to live holy, how to live right, how to govern themselves. Are you getting this? Yes. 
Now, I, I, I'm kind of challenged by this. I'm kind of challenged by this. Now, you would, you would have thought that this fellow doesn't even know the voice of God. And I, I would think that if God was going to give a message, give him a little something. Give him something manageable. Give him something that whatever he's going to declare, maybe it's not that heavy. Are you following me? Those of you that read the text, right? Give him something that can help him to develop himself and get comfortable with, with how God speaks and the kind of stuff that God can say. But God doesn't work like that. God didn't do that. God took this young, budding young man who had never heard the voice of God and gives him a message of judgment to the man who's in charge. God gives Samuel a message to give to Eli about the judgment of his own house. God gives Samuel a message about how God is going to destroy Eli's family. He's going to destroy his sons. What a message to give a young man. But I, I heard it was Jeremiah, I believe, that said it's good that the young man bear the yoke in his youth. Principle number three. Principle number three. We cannot select what we want God to say. He is sovereign and he will do and he will say whatever he wants to say. This is an important principle. I believe 100% in the ministry of the fivefold giftings of the church. I believe fivefold ministry is important for proper functioning in the church. But each gift and office, listen to me, brethren, and if you're taking notes, write this down. Every gift and office must be tested. I'm in the book, brethren. Every gift and every office must be tested. Everybody say tested. tested. We're serving a generation that is so, I heard my mom say, licky licky. Almost like we believe anything and everything with no testing. No discernment, no study, no, di no searching the scriptures, no verification, no, no testing something. And the church is going crazy because people are just prophesying and we're receiving it. Folks are saying stuff that God never told them to say. And we're lapping it up like it's God. And the watchdogs in Zion, their mouths are shut. Because we're living in the Laodicean church. You know the church that calls preachers who will say what we want them to say. I told you I came to challenge you, brethren. I didn't come here to make you jump up and down and feel all happy. There has to be a commitment to an authentic move of God. This is our lies we're talking about. This is the lies of people we are dealing with. We don't need people just coming around saying whatever comes to their mind. 
Tell me what God said. Don't add anything to it. Don't take anything from it. Just say what God said to say. Don't try to be popular. Don't try for folks to like you. Just say what God said to say. Whether they will like it or not, just say what God said to say. This is not a popularity contest. It's not who is the most famous preacher. It's not who draws the greatest crowd. It's those who say what God says to say. The office of a prophet or an evangelist or a pastor or a teacher is not a joke. It's not a play thing. People are, people are abusing this thing. Uh, they're running out and starting their own churches and God never sent them anywhere. You are crazy if you follow somebody who went and was not sent. I don't want to follow a went preacher. I want to follow a sent preacher. Somebody who God put his hands or his hands upon her and sends her. Not somebody who just didn't like what the preacher said. So they think they can go down the road and start their own church. Or somebody who falls into hard times and loses their job and feels if they start a church, they'll get a new job. This ain't about church money. This is about the kingdom of God. People saying what God said and God never said nothing. And the church to a large extent is to be blamed. Because we stop testing the preachers. We stop testing the prophet. We stop studying the Bible. Bible said that when the apostles went to Berea and they began preaching the word of God and began preaching the word of God the Berean said all right stop that's enough we're gonna go study and see what you're saying is true let's go open this book and see what what you're saying if it's founded in scripture And the lying prophets come around and they start talking stuff that, that after they talk it, it could, it could apply to a thousand circumstances. When God spoke to Samuel, he, saw, he called Samuel's name, he called Eli's name. told him what house to go to. He knew who he was talking to. When God spoke to Barnabas about Paul, he said, go down the street, call straight. And you'll get to this fellow's house and inside that house, there's somebody there named Paul. He's waiting for you. He's seen you in a vision. God can speak specifically. He can talk to your circumstance. He can talk to your situation. He knows exactly what you're going through. This is not a guessing game. God knows how you feel. So when he sends a word, he sends it right to you.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible commands us to test. Write this down. Deuteronomy 18, 21, 22. You're going to know how a prophet is real. You're going to know because if what he says comes to pass, what she says comes to pass. That means that you have to wait a year, wait. And I think something should be said to those that have the gift of the prophet. I'm not saying this, I'm not saying what I'm saying today to squash and make you feel afraid of that gifting. But it ought, you should be in a place where you are awfully sensitive and diligent about the gift that God has put in your spirit. The pastor has an important responsibility. He executes it. He should execute it with precision, with diligence, with care. The same thing with the evangelist. The same thing with the teacher. With diligence, with care. It's the Lord's gifting in your life. The apostle and the prophet. Jeremiah 28, 9. Listen, let's move on. We're going to wrap this up in a few moments. God revealed his plan to destroy the family of Eli. Why? Because Eli refused to correct corruption. In the tabernacle with his sons. Listen, brethren. There can be corruption in your political system. There can be corruption in the police. There can be corruption in the education. There can be corruption everywhere. But there ought not to be corruption in the house of God. Are you hearing me? I'm not saying there won't be. But there has to be somebody who calls sin, sin in the church. Somebody who has enough righteousness in them to say, listen, I know you hold an important position, but you're not living right, so you got to sit down. It's an honorable thing to be on the choir. But I think if you're not living right, go to the pastor and say, pastor, I got to sit down. And if somebody knows somebody's not living right, you go to go talk to them and tell them to sit down. Oh, help us, Lord. The boys were in the church messing with the women, messing with the sacrifices, messing around with stuff. The offerings that people brought, they were messing around with it. And people, people were coming to Eli and telling him, Pastor, so and so's not living right. So and so is doing stuff. So and so's not doing the right stuff. And Eli, look in the book, it's in there in the second chapter. Eli just goes to the boys and says, listen, I hear that stuff's going on. Stop. Now you would have thought, you would have thought that when Eli went to his sons and said, listen, I know what you're doing. Stop it. That God would have been satisfied. But God wasn't satisfied. Let me jump back one second. So, so Samuel comes and tells Eli everything that God told him to say. And there's something admirable about Eli, even though he's standing in a place of judgment. He says, listen, I know something about God. I'm out of place. God's told me before. And I didn't listen to him. But because God is sovereign, 
Let him do whatever he wants to do. You know what's happening sometimes in our churches? When people get disciplined, they kiss their teeth, leave church and go down the church down the street. And the foolish pastor down the street doesn't find out what you're doing in the church. Because if they left this house in rebellion, they're bringing that rebellious spirit down the road. But if you're a true child of God, and you've been reprimanded, if you know God, you ought to sit down in the house of God and take your judgment and take your discipline because God loves you. If God doesn't judge you, he don't love you. But if he judges you and chastens you, you never will have a daddy. I don't want a pastor that cannot correct me when I'm wrong. I need a pastor to correct me when I'm wrong. If he does not correct me, I could be lost. And preach things to me to always make me feel good. I need something sometimes to make me feel good. I don't want to come to church in my sin and leave church in my sin. If I come to church in my sin, I want somebody to say something that will bring me to this altar. That I will weep and cry on this altar and say, Lord, have mercy on me. Yes. Eli had enough sense. To say God is God. He's going to do. Whatever he wants to do. Let's close with this. Let me wrap, begin wrapping this up. Why is this so important? Because when God speaks... This message that he gave to Samuel was not a message of excitement, of jumping up and down and all of this feel-good stuff. This was a harsh message. It was a harsh message because Eli, Eli knew the voice of God. God had spoken to Eli and told Eli to correct his sons. He told Eli, don't, don't allow your boys to be doing what they're doing. Correct them harshly. Discipline them harshly. Move them out of their position. I don't care if they're your sons. There's no nepotism in this church. Say yes, Lord. This church of Jesus Christ is not a family something. If God wants to raise a family member, He can. If He chooses to. God judged Eli because he knew his sons were corrupt and they were dishonoring the house of God and he wouldn't discipline them properly. Let me say this a word to parents. Your job as parents is to raise your children in the ways of God. Your job as a parent is not to be your children's friends. 
is to be their parent. It's to love them. To care for them. To, to guide them. To direct their way. But you're not their friend. You develop good relationships with them. They, yes, ought to be able to talk to you and share with you their deepest desires, their hurts, their confusions. But you never want to break down that thing that allows you to discipline them. And to tell them when they are wrong. You never want to be in a position where you are afraid to tell your children when they're wrong. This is particularly dangerous the older you get. This is particularly dangerous the older you are. You notice when you're young and you have young children, you, you have stamina, you have fight, you have bite. But as you get older, some of the younger ones get away with stuff that the older ones didn't get away with. Because as you get older, you start losing a bit of fight. But God still expects you to stand righteously in, your pres in His presence. And raise up a child in the way he should go or she should go. So when he or she is old, they will never depart from it. You ought to be able to perceive when your children are going off track. They can have really great crafted statements. They can say things to you to convince you that they know what they're doing. And they have no clue what they're doing. So just like Samuel, Eli, had to perceive that something was happening. You need to know when God is saying some things and be able to give wisdom and instruction to your children. They may not listen to you, but your job is to speak. Your job is to take a righteous position. Your job is to stand for God, cause it what it will. If you listen carefully, when God judged Eli, he said that, Eli, you did not restrain your sons. This little stop it wasn't what God was looking for. Are you hearing me, church? Do not make compromises for your children. You can lose your way because you make compromises. Don't take sides with your children. Take sides with what is right. Love your children. But take side with what is right. Come on, beloved. Eli merely told his sons to stop it. It was a light resistance. Knowing full well that the boys were corrupt to the bone. And he wouldn't remove them. Listen, God's judgment against Eli was on the basis of one, two things. Listen, God had already warned Eli. So this message that Samuel brought was not the first time Eli was hearing this. The Bible said God's judicial process in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word. So Samuel had to come with this message a second time to solidify the judgment over Eli's life that he wasn't righteous. And secondly, because he didn't reprimand the sons for his actions. A word to the children. I don't care how old you are. If you're a child, if you're somebody else's daughter or son. 
The Bible says obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. And this is the commandment that comes with promise. There's a level of honor here. There's a level of, 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 of ethical righteousness and moral righteousness that God esteems highly. But you can't be obedient if you don't have an obedient heart. Children, have an obedient heart. Listen to those that are given to you as your parents to lead your life, to give you direction. If your parents are wise and they don't know something, if your parents are wise, I'll tell you what they'll do, they'll seek counsel. Because if you understood, one of the principles is that everybody needs somebody. And just because you're a parent doesn't mean you know everything. And so if you're a good parent, you'll know how to go talk to another parent who can give you some wisdom to help you to raise your child. There are people who have gone through what you're going through, some with success and some with failure. And those that even have failed can tell you something that will help you to be a success. Children must honor God in their own lives. Take in what your parents are saying to you. Take in what your leaders are saying to you. But invariably, you know, invariably you're going to step out into this world and live on your own. You're going to have to make your own decisions. And I pray to God that every decision that you make is a good decision. And even when you make the wrong ones, you know how to correct yourself. Because you've taken heed to those that are around you and those that have raised you up in the things of God. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I, I came here this morning to challenge you. Stand with me, please. I think I've grown up a little bit and I, we don't need a whole lot of fussing to know when God is in the house. This is a challenge to Bethel while you're going through consecration. This is a challenge to every one of you in this building, every visitor here. The single most important thing that you should be pursuing is the voice of God. I'm a pastor, and I'm still striving hard after his voice. Wrestling, crying, weeping, searching for his voice. One writer said his voice makes the difference. When he speaks, release my troubled mind. It's the only voice I hear. That makes the difference. That's the voice I want to follow. That's the voice I'm after. That's the voice I want to pursue. I don't want him to talk to me and I'm running to people. I want to know his voice for myself. wants to speak to you raise your hands right now everyone across this building his voice makes the difference God wants to speak to you you're here today This week, go ahead. His, his voice this week, raise your hands. Makes a difference.
friends as he speaks. You are going. He relieves my troubled. I don't know if it's the whole church, but I, I know you're going into consecration. You're going to another phase, another week, another few days. And I'll follow one day. I'll tell you. You don't want the same old stuff. You want to hear something from the Lord. You want to silence every other voice and hear God. You're here today and you feel in your belly. You feel it in your body. You feel God moving in you to get to the next level one day another dimension in the spirit raise your hand and worship right now raise your hand close your eyes raise your hand and worship him right now step out of your seat and come right now you're here you need the holy ghost you need god to talk to you you want something different than you have ever had before Step out of your seat and come right now. He's, he pro he, he's probably already spoke to you in this service. Don't stop worshiping, brethren. You don't mind your business. My own business. Lift your hands right now and give God praise and worship right now. You're here and you need God. Come. You're here and you need God. I come to invite you because God wants you to. He wants to speak to you. It's the only voice, it's the only young lady, voice young man, step out of your seat and come, run, come. And I'll follow one day God is calling. He He's calling you like he called Samuel. You're running to everything and you're running everywhere. Come to Jesus. Come. Come young man. Come from the balcony. Come. God is calling you. Come young lady. Bethel, I come to tell you God wants to speak in this house. Release the worship. Release the worship. Release the worship. Hallelujah. And I'll follow one day. Come on, young man, young lady. Come. Time. Husband, if you're here, bring your wife. Oh, yes, his voice. Come with your family. It makes a difference. Oh, when he speaks, speaks he, he releases my troubled mind. Come on, altar workers, begin to work with these. The there are people here that need the Holy Ghost. That makes a Young man, God is calling you. And I'll follow one day at a time. One of the reasons when you go to the dance hall, the enemy has you stand in front of the big speakers because he doesn't want you to hear the voice of God. He's tried to drown out the voice of God. But I come to tell you there is nothing that can drown the voice of God when He's calling you. He's going to call you right out of that relationship you're not supposed to be in. He's going to call you out of your lethargic, heavy worship. He's calling you out of your religiosity. He's calling you out of your deadness. He's calling you.
calling you to the living God. Hallelujah. And I'll follow one day at a time. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. He released Speak, my Lord. Mother, my Hallelujah. Speak, Lord. I need to hear. I need to hear. I need to hear your voice. I need to hear your voice. Oh, yes, his voice. I'm tired. I'm tired. When he speaks, I'm tired. He it's been a long Lord time. I'm coming and I'm going through the motions. The I'm lighting the candle. I'm reading the scriptures. I'm singing on the choir. Playing the music. I'm ushering people to their seats. But it's been a long time. It's been a long time. It's been a long time that I've heard your voice. It's the only voice. Hallelujah. Speak, my Lord. Speak, my Lord. Speak, my Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak, my Lord. Speak, my Lord. Yes, Lord. Speak, my Lord. Yes. Speak, and I'll be quick to answer thee. Speak. Yes. My Lord. It's not too late to come to this altar. Speak, Reach out for the Holy Ghost Lord. right now. God promised. God promised to give you the Speak, gift of the Holy Spirit. And I will answer. Lord, send me. God promised. Speak. You don't have to fall on the ground. Lord. Just open your mouth Speak, and he'll fill you. My Lord. Hallelujah. Just open your mouth and begin and to praise I'll him. Be quick to ask him for the gift of the Holy Ghost. If you ask him for the gift, my Lord. he will not give you a stone. If you ask for bread, he will not give you a stone. If you ask for the Spirit, he will not. He will give you the Spirit. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, my Lord. Just open your mouth and say, Lord, yes, here I am. My Lord. Speak like Samuel spoke. Here I am. Speak, Lord. To answer thee. Speak through me. Speak through me. My Lord. Speak through me. Speak. Here I am, Lord. My Lord. Here I am, Lord. I've been going to church, but I haven't heard your voice. I've been reading my Bible, but I haven't heard your voice. I've been going to Bible study, but I haven't heard your voice. It's time to be saved. It's time to be saved. It's time to be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It's time to receive. I would to God today, there is somebody here been in church a long time but you just need to hear he's not in the fire he's not in the earthquake it's a still small voice hallelujah the inspiration is gone and you need to hear his voice again to reclaim that inspiration you remember when you used to sing in your prayer you remember when you used to sing in tongues 
You remember when you used to pray and you'd be to sing in tongues. Somehow it's been a long time. It's been a long time. It's, it's been a long time since tears have broken through the air of the tear ducts. And you have weeped in the presence of God. Hallelujah. 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 Let's worship God, Bethel. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. I want to feel you. I want to feel your presence again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Speak, my Lord. Yes. Speak to my children. Speak to my spouse. Speak to my co workers. Speak to our prime minister. Speak to our pastor. Speak to our leaders. Speak to our musicians. Speak to our families, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak, my Lord. Speak, my Lord. I want to speak to every prophet that God has given you. God has given you the gifting of the prophet. To speak what God said to speak. Don't be arrogant. But be humble and confident in the things of God. The church needs the voice of the prophet. Hallelujah. You have let people shut your mouth. Because they have said things about you. My Lord. But I come to tell you today, speak let God I'll speak through you again. Wherever you are, the church needs speak your voice. My Lord. Speak, my Lord. Musicians, you need speak God to speak to you. Answer, Lord. Inspiration. Send that when you begin to play Hallelujah. under the anointing of God, Speak unclean spirits begin Lord. to lift from the people. Speak Perverted spirits Lord. begin to lift from the people. Speak when you begin to I play I'll because you have heard from God, we need you to be consecrated. Speak, my Lord. Speak, young lady, my Lord. young man, God is speaking to you. Say, here I am. Here I am. Here I am, Lord. I've been in church a long time. I have been hiding in this big church. Hiding on the balcony. But God's voice will find you. He will find you in your house. He will find you in that place where you don't belong. Hallelujah. As the voice of God walked with Adam, God's voice will walk with you. Hallelujah. And I'll be quick to answer thee. Hey, Hallelujah. Church of God, Bethel, raise your hand and let's begin to intercede right now. Begin to intercede right across this building. There are people that need the Holy Ghost. Begin to lift up your voice and ask God to speak. As he speaks, somebody will start talking in tongues. As he begins to speak, somebody will talk in tongues. 
God is talking to somebody to get to the baptismal pool and be baptized today in Jesus name arise and be baptized washing away your sins my Lord speak and I will answer what are you doing at the back of the church God has called you you have no business at the back of the church you have no business at the back bench you have no business upon the balcony hiding out from God but God will find you out hallelujah don't tell God it doesn't matter where you sit don't tell me it doesn't matter where you sit Lord, send me. God knows you come late so you can get a back seat. God knows you delay your coming so you can get a back seat. Get out of that back seat and find yourself up front. Speak, my Lord. Speak. My Lord, God is talking to you to step out of your company. And I will step out of that Lord, company. Send me. Stop holding on to those people who are holding you back. Speak, They're like crabs in a bucket. Lord, you can't move as long as you're around those people. You can't find your direction around those people. You can't go forward because of those I'll people. Be Get out of that bucket. And come forward and let God move in your life. My Lord, speak. Come on. My Lord, come to the water. Come to Jesus. He's calling I you. Answer, Lord, send me. Why are you not on the choir? Speak, my Lord, speak. What are you doing in the congregation when God has called you? I'll be quick to answer thee. Speak, my Lord. What are you doing there? Speak, my Lord. Get up from where you are. God is calling you. Lord, send Get up, my Lord. Get up from where you are. Speak, my Lord. Speak, Get up from Lodabar. That place of no pasture. Me. How long are you going to stay in that dry place? Speak, my Lord. God is calling Speak, you to greener pastures. My Lord. God is calling you to feed my Speak, sheep. And I will answer, Lord, send me. The Lord rebuke you. I don't know who you are. Speak, my Lord. Sitting where you shouldn't be sitting. Speak, my Hiding Lord. from God. You can't hide from God. Speak, and I'll be quick. You can't hide from me. God. What are you doing there? Speak, my Lord. My God, my Lord, what are you doing? And I will answer if you don't Lord, find your place, you might lose everything. Speak, my Lord. Speak. 